Greetings, guys. Thanks for checking this video out. This video is a, is a literally a bird's eye overview on what the hike is like to hike Blanca Peak, Little Bear Peak, and Ellingwood, the three big 14ers at the base of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. We just finished hiking these peaks this last week. It was super fun and super exciting, and I've got some unique tidbits that uh, that you should know to make your hike a little bit more enjoyable. What you're looking at here is uh, a, a rendition of, of Google Earth. Uh, just for orientation-wise, we've got Great Sand Dunes National Park. The approach to this hike is from on the infamous Lake Como Road. So the turnoff is, is here right off of Highway 150. It's an unmarked turnoff, just a couple miles in from the U.S. Highway 160. So as you head towards Great Sand Dunes National Park, you'll see a, door, a dirt road uh, turnoff there. Um, I, I think that the biggest takeaway is, is the, the distance that you've got to travel to get from the lake, uh, from the Como Road turnoff uh, up to Lake Como. Um, the, 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 the distance there is, is about seven miles and, and it's about 4,000 feet. So a lot of folks there, they'll, they'll take a two wheel drive car down there and they're just not able to get very far down this dirt road. Uh, you've got the lower four wheel drive parking, which is right here. I took my Land Rover down and I was able to get in my, in my, in my Land Rover, I was able to get up to 10,000 feet. Uh, so I was able to get four miles, 4.7 miles in up this road, uh, which saved us an, uh, an immense amount of time. And uh, this road especially, it's facing west. So as you're hiking up this, it's just the heat of the day is on you the, the entire time. So, so do whatever you can to, uh, to, to get a Jeep or, or find a Land Rover or something where you can at least get up that, that far. Um, so you've got this this first port this first portion of the road to the lower four wheel drive lot is about two miles, and then when we go up to the to the Land Rover uh, parking area here, I got in 4.7 miles there, uh, and then you've got the the remaining distance from uh, from from that Land Rover parking area here up to Lake Como which is about 2.4 miles. But again, from, from here to here, you're gaining almost 2,000 feet. Uh, and from the rover parking down, it's about 2,500 feet. So, so you're, you're, you're about 4,300 feet all in from, from the Lake Como Road off to, to where you need to go. So let's zoom in here a little bit and see if we can't get a better idea of what the road conditions look like. As you're driving up the Lake Como Road, it's just really rocky on this first part. Um, and we saw a bunch of cars that had pulled off here at this lower four wheel drive parking lot, but they could have gone farther up the road. So again, if you've got uh, vehicles that have high, high clearance, you can make it up to the first part of these switchbacks in these trees. Um, and I'll show you here as, as we went up, there's some, there's still some nice turnoffs here. We saw a bunch of cars that had parked in this area right there. This is about... 4.4 miles in from the road. So reset your, your, your odometer. There are turns. Uh, from there, moving up, the grade got, got a lot steeper. And this is where I parked my Land Rover was on this final grade. This portion of this road, um, if I would have taken more time, there were some big uh, rocks that, um, that were on this section of the road. But if, if I would have taken more time, we could have, we could have positioned ourselves to, to get past those. And that, that literally would have saved us probably another mile and a half or two of hiking. Because once you get past this part of the hike, um, you, you get over this bend and it levels out and you're kind of hiking in this, in this forested area where it's shaded a little bit and it's, it's really pretty. Um, but you'll, you'll be able to hike or, or drive your vehicle uh, all the way right up close to Jaws 1. Um, I've got some, some video footage that I'll put in there of, of Jaws 1. Most normal vehicles are not going to be able to get past that. But again, if you had a, a high clearance Jeep Grand Cherokee or a Land Rover or a Land Cruiser or something, you should be able to do yourself a favor um, and get up in this area. There was, a, there was a bunch of cabins that were through here as well. As well. Uh, the Commodore Mine used to be here in the 1870s. Um, and there's some, there's some good camping and there's a river that kind of flows, uh, along here, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the format there. Once you, once you get off from, um, 
from from Jaws 1 and Jaws 2. Again, if you can make it up, up to Jaws 1, you've only got about um, and the, the river kind of crosses right here and you've got Jaws 2. So if you're just hiking this stretch to get up to Lake Como. And I'll kind of zoom up here and here's where we have Lake Como. Lake, Lake Como sits at about 11,700 feet. Um, and you've got these series of lakes that are that that um, that you can play in. Um, I've, I've got some footage. We, we jumped in. These lakes are really really warm. We jumped in Lake Como and went swimming. I actually brought up a little raft uh, that I floated in after the hike, and that was that was awesome. We 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 loved it. So don't underestimate that. Okay, so let's look at some of the uh, hiking itinerary on where we're going to be going. Uh, again, we got Little Bear here on your right. Uh, Blanca is the peak in the middle. Then Ellenwood is on your left. Uh, Lindsay, just by way of, or of orientation, is a little bit uh, is a little bit you know further out. Uh, that way you can't really get it from this side. But th these are some of some of the main ones. And uh, let's look at the path you can that we followed here to do that. Um, and I'm going to play a little uh, a little little video here that's going to take us uh, through a timeline of what our of what our hike was like. Okay. So we started at Lake Como, and when we started at, at, at Lake Como, you're going to hike up this steep, very steep uh, chute up to the top. And once you get to, to, to the top of the chute, you're on the ridge line, and the ridge line is uh, about 12,600 feet. So when you leave the road down below, you're, 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 you're literally uh, – at, uh, at 11,900 feet, and you get on top of this ridge line at 12,600 feet. So you've gone up, uh, you know, 700 feet and half a mile as you're hiking up this chute. So it, it is pretty steep, but it's it's nothing uh, compared to what's uh, to what what's what's coming your way. Let's see if we have a. There we go. Yeah, we got a we got an elevation profile here that will. Show us this a, a a little bit better. So as as I move the arrow on on where we're hiking here, this is starting at Lake Como, 11,700 feet. You make your way up the ridge line here at 12,600 feet. That's about half a mile, and then you walk along the ridge line for another half a mile. Notice the grade here. If you see the the percentage on where we're at, the the percentage is is showing the slope, the slope or how steep it is. Um, so you're walking along along the back side of this, and you get to this point right here at around 13,100 feet, and this is where you make the approach uh, to go up the hourglass. So, so far, you've only been hiking for 1.12 miles, and we're going to take this approach, and this is where it really gets steep, up, this, up the hourglass, and notice how steep it gets. It gets up to almost 80%. Uh, steepness. I've got I've got some video footage there that I can post as well. Um, and then you get on top of you know you you, you get on top of, of Little Bear Peak. So these are my actual GPS coordinates that we followed on getting on top of Little Bear. So total it was 1.12 miles from Lake Como here all the way up to Little Bear uh, and then back. So we hiked all the way back to Lake Como. So to, it was total 2.75 miles round trip. All right. So uh, the the biggest thing to be on the lookout when you're when you're hiking the, the hourglass, the hourglass section itself really isn't that difficult. It's just the rocks. So th this is the hourglass section right here, and then the last third when you get out of the hourglass section, there's a there's a bunch of loose rocks. And if you've got someone up there who's careless, any rock that they knock off, any rock that they knock off in this area is going to come down that chute, and and it is it is deadly. I mean. I dropped my helmet, and my helmet bounced and picked up just crazy velocity as it was rolling down the mountain. Thank goodness it stopped. But you 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 want to plan this accordingly and either go during the week uh, and make sure you're 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 the first one up there. You I would not recommend that you do this on on a weekend uh, because if someone if someone just has an accident and they say sorry, you know we didn't mean to knock a rock down. Um, it's it's uh, it's over. You know it's dead meat. Um, okay, so we get back down, and then the next day we went and we hiked to do uh, Blanca. So let's see if we can't see that one a little bit better here. There we go. 
And with Blanca, again, we started at, at, at the um, at 11,700 uh, feet. And so we hiked for 1.5 miles up the trail and you pass, you pass the Blue Lake up here until you get to Crater Lake. And once you get to Crater Lake, then you can see the ridge line on where you're going to hike to. And you see Ellenwood on your left and Blanca on your right. Uh, the trail is not too sketchy at all. There's there, there was one part here, right here. There's kind of a class three move, um, but it's it's nothing too tricky. We were up there with a bunch of Boy Scouts and and they were able to do it. But so once you get on top of the ridge, when you get on top of the of of of, of the ridge line, it's 0. 0.6 miles from Crater Lake up to the ridge line. And then from the ridge line to the top, the ridge line is about 13,900 feet. And then from the ridge line to the top of Blanca, it's uh, it's only 0.19 miles. But you get up and you, and you top out at 14,345 feet. So it's 2.34 miles total from Lake Como, the bottom here, all the way up on top of, of Blanca, 2.34 miles. Now we decided that we wanted to do the traverse over to Ellenwood. And the weather was good when um, when we were doing this, but what was tricky was we couldn't really tell on the map on where to go. So a thing that really helped us out was there is a mine, a mine shaft uh, that is on the side of of the mountain. And as you're as you're hiking up, I'll post a picture of it here. You'll be able to see what that mine looks like uh, from the top of Blanca Peak. Uh, you'll be able to see a faint trail that cuts off from the main ridge trail up to Blanca Mine. Uh, and it's just a faint discoloration. The mine is only about, you know, 15 feet deep into the mountain. They really didn't go very far. But uh, there's there, there's there's a trail and there's the carns that are there right by the, mar by the mine, and that's where you can pick up. So when you're hiking across the traverse from from Blanca over to Ellingwood, uh, what, what's key to understand uh, on this difference is you've got about 0.37 miles is where you're hiking across from this ridge line up and over into Ellingwood. And there's kind of some sketchy parts right here, kind of some, some class three stuff. But as long as you hike, you're, you're kind of hiking right below the, the ridge line until you get to the top of Ellingwood. And then uh, when you get to the top of Ellingwood and then you're going down, use that mine as your reference point because um, it, it was easy to lose the trail on the, on the way down. And we had, uh, there was actually several hikers up there that had lost the trail. And if you try to go down this stuff right here, you're, you're, you're going to get cliffed out. So make sure you go at an angle, angle towards that Blanca mine. And then uh, once you get there, you can, you can descend down in. So all in the entire hike, uh, the whole kit and caboodle was eight miles for all of the peaks. And again, when you look at this, at this, uh, at this elevation plot, you know, from 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 beginning to end, uh, it's 5,755 feet is the elevation that you're getting just from uh, Lake Como alone. So, fantastic hike. Hope this uh, tutorial, this video helped a little bit. So it gives you some orientation on what to look for, and uh, you can check out my YouTube channel for some other videos and, and insights on the actual hike itself. All right, like and subscribe.